Creative Katie's Mixed Media Technique Tags series. Come join my Facebook group, All Things Mixed Media Creative Katie. Come join the creation ships and share as you do these tags. On Instagram and social media, use these hashtags. Don't forget to subscribe. That way you won't miss any technique videos or anything else I might be up to. Mixed media technique tag number one, creating designer tissue papers. Hi hey everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Birchall here, and this is mixed media technique tag number one. And the technique that we are going to start off with is creating our own designer papers. Now this is the only designer paper that I have. And I was gifted this in a little package from Peg Robinson. I My name was drawn on, on her YouTube channel and this was in amongst all the other goodies that she sent. And I absolutely love it, but I haven't used it because I want to create my own and I want to be reminded to create my own papers. I, I'm not sure about you, but if it comes to spending money, I'd rather buy some more color medium and then some of the wonderful lusciousness than tissue paper that I can create myself using supplies that I probably have or that my friends have. So we're going to create our own designer papers. So this falls into the category of actually two categories, texture and pattern. So the pattern part is pretty obvious. You have different patterns on here. And if you look at this one, typically they have butterflies or bees, there's script, there's a music stamp, there's some geometrics, there's swirls and circles, and it's filled up pretty close with all sorts of lusciousness. So that's the pattern. And this is going to be, can be done on the background, you can put it on the, on the as a first layer, or you can apply it after you've placed color on f um, later layers. So you don't have to necessarily glue it on. Now you're also going to get texture with with this technique. Now you're going to get texture in two ways. One, you're going to get texture like I achieved on these tags where you, the tissue paper, because it's so apt to crinkle, if you really work that crinkle and work that in and then do some treatment of it, you're going to get some very physical texture. That's stuff you could feel. It's bumps on the page. And I'm going to give you a couple samples of physical texture that I've done in some pages. So on the back here we have, there's physical texture. Now again, you can see some of it because of the sprays that I put on. There's not a whole lot here, but there definitely is some of that texture on that one. On this one, you can see even more. If I run my hands on it, it's, it's bumpy. It has that texture to it, and it's really, really lovely. So that's the one. And I'm going to put a link to that technique video where I make these tags. There was a series of three tags, two of which I used tissue papers of different sorts to get this pattern. I'm not gonna do that technique right now. One, because I already have a video that's doing it. And two, I just wanna give you something a little bit new and a little bit different. So that's the one texture. The other texture is when you see layers peeking through and you see part of an image and you see those layers and that's called visual texture. So we're developing pattern and texture, and I find these two really work together, which is which one is which. So to get started, you need permanent ink. It can be black if you had brown. I don't have a permanent brown ink. I do not want to use anything. I do not want to use my distress inks because they are, they're not permanent. So if I was to then glue that onto a page, it's going to run and make a mess. So I'm going to use permanent. So I'm going to either use my stays on or my archival ink. And I've only got a few colors of each, but you can 
do a variety. I personally think I probably do a lot more in maybe jet black and um, a brown, like a burnt umber kind of color. So, have those. Grab a variety size, sizes of acrylic blocks, if you have. Then go through your stamp collection and look for things. Now, most of them have script stamps. There's some kind of script or music stamps. And a lot of texture stamps. So when I talk texture stamps, they're kind of designs. They're very non-descript. They're not specific to a certain focal point. They're design. So I have a variety here that I've pulled out. There's a crackle one, kind of some of these swirls. This is a brand new one that I bought some netting. I think that's going to add some lovely bubbles, dots, and you'll notice that on a lot of these I've taken them off the block and that's because when I want to put them on I want bits and pieces. I don't want necessarily the whole stamp. Um, some little flowers, swirls, dots. This was from another stamp. I cut out the rest of it. You can also use things like shelf liner. Different types of shelf liner will make different patterns. And so here I put them on blocks. I also have some loose that I can put the pattern on. We can use that. You can use some plastic netting that you might have or punchinella. So it doesn't have to be store-bought. So those are kind of all texture based. Here's a prefabbed stampers and stampers anonymous Tim Holtz one and I like the circles here and any of these would be kind of fillers in that so that's kind of the textured one so went through the, through the stamps for that the other thing that I'm thinking that I would like oh I got a couple more textures here and I, if you've watched any of my videos you've definitely seen these Tampendous um, blocks I love them they are all about texture. This one is a foliage cube and this one's called tiled quad cube. But again, they're not specific to any kind of theme necessarily. So I'm going to have those at the ready. Then you have stamps that may have pictures on them, but there's something that you really like, something you know, I really like dragonflies and peacock feathers. Zoom in here. So I just went and I grabbed. So I'm going to recommend that when you're going to do this, you're going to do several sheets. Allot yourself some time because why? by the time you go through your stamps and pull everything out, make it worth your while. Another dragonfly kind of thing. This is another per or a homemade stamp from a cut ball and I like the floral design that can go there. Love this pair of stamp. But how many times am I really going to use this as a focal point? But I have it in the background? Love that. So um, this is going to get ink for the first time. Here's another one I bought, 50% off coupon or 50% off sale, 30 plus a 30% off this tree roots. And I'm thinking I bought it specifically to make this, do these designer papers. A lot of the designer papers have butterflies. So I dug out all my various butterfly stamps. They also tend to have a lot of hearts. A lot of my stamps, my butterflies here and my stamps, they were dollar store purchases. Um, so, you know, keep your eye open. They don't have to be expensive. Little cherub, little angels that I, I love, that kind of stuff. So this is something that I wouldn't mind seeing. The other thing that you can do is develop a theme. You might have all Christmas or snowflake stamps and make kind of a holiday paper that would go as a background paper for your holiday ones. This was something I wanted to do. 
never got around to it. So I've got these swirls actually would be lovely just as texture on any of them. They wouldn't necessarily be. So all my snowflakes and holiday stamps. There we have some more, you know, some of your holiday stamps. If you're not making cards, this is a perfect place to put them. I've got a big snowflake here and it's using and maximizing your stamps. Here's another one that I bought to make cards with this year that didn't make it to the card. So I'm going to put it on some background paper and then it's going to become part of next year's holiday pages. You can do things. You can also do this one that I created on a uh, coffee filter is a travel theme. So I went through all my travel stamps and again this was a dollar store purchase and then I have this one. And I just thought that that would be very nice just for a travel one. If you had a particular theme on that, that might go with the Paris one. So you can kind of mix and match. That's the benefit of it. You can create what you want for yours and it's going to be original. It's going to be unique to, to just your page. Um, I suggest getting together with friends. Everybody brings their stamps, everybody brings their stamp pads and their tish, various tissue papers and go to town with that. So this is one that I created earlier on that. Alternatively, you can take and do one that's all sentiment stamps. I have all these beautiful, you inspire believe in your dreams and I can combine this with hearts, live, love, laugh, as well as some sentiment collections that I have. So this is just going to allow you to use your stamps because they're relatively small on something larger than an ATC or an ICAT. And we all love maximizing our investment. So what are we going to stamp on? Well, I already gave you a sneak peek and I said you can, don't just stamp on tissue paper, you can stamp on um, coffee filters. I love how coffee filters, when you use gel medium or Mod Podge and put them on the page, I love the texture that that gives you. So stamping on that just seemed like a no brainer. What else can you stamp on? Well. Of course you can stamp on just plain old tissue paper. And I'm not talking the expensive stuff. I'm talking the cheaper the better. Buy it at the dollar store. Reuse some of the stuff that you get in gift bags. This is actually pink and I've got different colors. I don't care about the color necessarily. I'm just going to use this for today. So I have pink for that background. Pattern paper. So there's already some markings on there and this is going to lead potentially to a vintage look because it's already kind of got that old age look. Stamp on there. Uh, my mom is, was a, is a seamstress and so she has tons of patterns. So I have an endless supply of this. So I'm going to use pattern paper. Now when you're cutting it, I would make a big sheet. I would put this on my whole table, clear my craft table, I wouldn't be making a video and I would be doing a big sheet so that if I want it to do the whole 9 by 12 sheet in my journal, I could if I wanted to. Or you can rip and piece them together as well and that might add more texture to the mix. What else can you stamp? You can stamp on napkins. So you have some of these lovely napkins, which is a technique in itself using the napkins. But you can take off the backing paper and use this to stamp on, but don't stop there. How about adding some more stamps to this? just to add, punch it up just that little bit. 
So I've got a couple here. And sometimes they have two like this. These two have two layers. Sometimes they have three. But you can reuse those tissue papers. Okay, so let's get started. This is not difficult at all. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and we're going to do a couple just textural ones and a couple theme ones and we're just going to to go and for the purposes of this I'm just going to stick with my black stays on. I've re-inked this to make it fresh so I can do all my stamping. under here so if I go over the edge I'm not going to worry too much in fact sometimes I'm going to deliberately go over the edge and there we go And they can overlap or not, as the case may be. So the sky is really the limit. And you can mix some of the sentiments with Now you can design this specific for a page. If you were doing a winter one, you could have all the backgrounds, the snowflakes, or you can just make make a bunch and have them pre-done, ready to use. As you create. So it's just something that can go into your stash. So And you can overlap or not as you see fit. You can see all the designs there. Okay, so I'm set up for my next batch of 
of tissue paper and I'm going to do this on the uh, pattern paper and since I want my pear stamp I wanted some everything that kind of went with that so of course I have my script stamp it kind of goes everywhere my music stamp will be there as well and then I have some flourishes I have I did have a swirl and then these that just kind of seem to me feed into that same kind of feeling and then I have this heart stamp that I think is going to work on there as well so taking a few minutes to excuse me um, select your stamps ahead of time and peel back the papers and get them out can make the stamping go a whole lot quicker. Some of them, it also makes you use because there's some, some parts of some stamp sets that I find I never use and this is a place that you can use them completely. And I did re-ink this even though I thought I had it, had re-inked it fairly recently but it didn't seem to be as dark as I would have liked it. Go off the edges. Um, that kind of makes it look a little bit more complete. You see a lot of free printables with the Eiffel Tower behind it. So. Flourishes. I got this was another gift from Peg in that little gift packet she sent. In case you're worried about my mat here, I'm just using my Murphy soap here, mixed with detergent, and it just cleans up. So <laughs> this is a non-stick mat, and if it doesn't come off with this, I will use my my rubbing alcohol as well. But in between intermittently I would get, clean it up a little bit. I had stamped this travel one on a coffee filter earlier but you can also stamp after they've been colored with whatever leftover paint and used in a similar fashion. So I'm just adding some more stamps here to it. But once you have your stamps out, make a, make a whole session of it. Make it worth your time and effort of grabbing everything out. So here is another one on just plain tissue paper and I'm just putting a lot of different textures on this. And I'm playing with my stamp, seeing what, what they have, what they can create, and I'm, I'm really liking it. They take on a new life when you use them in this way. So while doing this, I did kind of figure out that 
starting with your biggest stamps is a good plan and then you can fill in with smaller ones um, after the fact you can also rearrange some a variety of stamps like three butterfly stamps and put them all on one acrylic rock and stamp them so they're kind of in a row like in some of the papers that you can buy um, get out your number stamps I thought of afterwards get out your number stamps from your um, any alphabet that you have put them in a row and stamp them because that's something you often see um, put in circles you know kind of do a little bit put it off to the side come back to it add a little bit more I like when there's a little bit of space a little bit of white space in between but again it's up to you what you like and when you think that it's done so if you want to go online you can google Tim Holtz's papers or just print a tissue paper and see what they have see what you like and then go to your stamps and see how that works as you can see it builds up over time and I absolutely love the end result here so just a word before we go on about using the whole page of the tissue paper I'm doing it on a smaller sheet because as you can see I'm trying to do film this video but if I was doing it on my own I would take it to my kitchen table and do whole big sheets and make it worth my while so I adhered these onto the tags with matte gel or Mod Podge off camera and I overlapped a little bit on this one and there was no color applied to the tag prior to me adhering the uh, pattern paper tissue stamp tissue on here now this one I applied some colors with my blending tools and my dilutions paints this was material or this was stamped on the napkin the backgrounds of the back backing of the napkins it has some interesting texture now the last one I'm going to do with you and I'm going to adhere the tissue this is just on plain old tissue paper with some matte gel and then I'm going to apply color now if you don't like the look of the manila tag behind you can give it a coat of gesso before you adhere it I knew I was going to put color on top of this so it didn't matter to me but if it does make a difference that's the way to avoid that I'm just giving this dry now you could put any color medium on this and I'm showing some varieties just so you get the idea that it's you can use more than one thing if you are making these tags you might decide to just do one tag and have the description for all the variations on it I'm doing tags for the different variations for display purposes if I was doing it just for myself I may not have, may not do that so I'm thinning out this uh, Liquitex basics paint and I'm just applying it with a brush now these colors are all fairly transparent which means you can see through them so if you get in the habit of looking at the tubes of paint it will indicate if it's transparent or opaque opaque meaning that it will cover more of what's underneath it so you don't really want to be using opaque paints for this treatment unless you want to hide some of the background and the stamping that you had and not have all of it peeking through so if you want it peeking through go with transparent paints um, looking at the tubes reading the tubes is just something I've started to do and it does provide you with some insight into how the paints will work
So now we've come to the part where we're going to basically create the recipe or do the summary of this technique and put it on the back of our tags. Now as you see here, I've already adhered um, my single one, not the one that has on which would go on two sides of the tag, on each of these. Now originally I thought oh I could do lots of tags I can put a, a pattern on one side and a pattern on the other and then have it on a tag that has two sided but then I quickly realized that that was problematic because then you'd have a series of tags and the description there and I wanted to have the information the summary right on the back of each and every tag so for instance for this technique, I will have these three tags using the pattern paper, using um, the backing of napkins, and using tissue paper. And again, with this one, color uh, underneath, color on top. So it kind of varied that. So there's some variety there on that. So I want the information on each tag here so that I can just flip it over. Now instead of writing out all the materials what I might do and this could get tweaked over time and if I tweak it and I try I change it I will put those printables on my blog and they will be available for you to access should you want them. Again, you don't necessarily need to print these out. You can just write them on the back and then there's no problem. You don't have to print out something different. So I'm just going to have it. It'll be mixed media technique tag number one, number one, and number one will be on there. I might refer back to C. You know, this might be A, this will be B, this will be C. And so that way I have everything right on the back of the tag that's there. So you notice on the back here that it is bordered with color. Now there's a little bit of the manila tag showing and I chose to paint the background. And in this case I'm just going to use up some of the paint <coughs> excuse me, that I had left over. It's just a thin layer um, just to finish off the tag. You could omit this step completely. So just gluing this on with a glue stick and you can do use whatever you want and I'm just making sure that it says mixed media technique tag number at the end where the it will be hole punched just to make sure that it's always going the same way and they're not inside upside down so I'm going to be filling this out a little bit on camera for you But I don't know that I'm going to include that with every video and some of it is off camera. So I labeled them uh, technique tag number one A, B and C. So on the bottom I have video link and I think it's a good idea to include the video link to my video. So in case you need more information or can't quite remember something you can always come back to this without having to search whose video was it, where was it, how was it. Likewise if there's another artists out there that has a technique video that you understand better or has other pieces of information has it going their way please put their link as well I plan to put other people's links on there as a way of tracking where those videos are so I don't forget because there's so many great videos out there and it's nice to be able to go back to them later so I'm filling it out all of these are a category of pattern the technique designing designer to tissue paper and I'm putting the very variations on there now I'm going to take a picture of the backs of these cards with the fronts and put it into my blog now give me a few days because I can't guarantee that it's going to happen um, by tomorrow or when this video goes up because I want to make sure, get a few more technique videos videoed um, and uploaded 
for that. Please make the information that you write here as specific for your needs, what you use, what, how much in detail you want on your tags. So one of the questions that people often have is, why would you want to do this? Well, if there's any texture on your page, stamping onto it afterwards is going to be difficult. So stamping onto the tissue paper avoids that and gives you, could get you a clean stamp if that's what you were going for. Likewise, it allows you the opportunity to have everything in your stash so that when you have 15 minutes to do, to sit down and do a page, you can quickly get it done without having to start from scratch. It's also beneficial, you can have them in your stash, take them to um, create dates with friends, or when you're traveling, you can take that and you don't have to bother taking your stamps and your acrylic box and your uh, permanent inks. So when you're writing, you can copy as I have, because I, I will put, for at least for the first ones on my blog, put abbreviations that make sense to you. This is for your reference, so make it how you want it. And I can tell you right now, since I've done uh, mixed media technique tips, tags number two, I changed the format to something else and that I think I'm going to like better. So you may want to wait on this one to see that video before you do the write-up. Or if this is the way you're working and you're quite happy with this, go with it. But I kind of get, a, get rid of the um, gluing the papers on and end up writing right on the tags. And again, if you only want to do one tag per technique and have more of a write-up on it, then do that if that's enough for you. Do as little or as much as you want. This may get you asking questions, oh, I wonder if, what would happen if I used this instead of this. I wonder what would happen if I did it first or last. This is your time to go out and experiment and then record the results on these technique tags so you can go back and benefit from them. Here I'm just putting on the reinforcements that I colored. I know I said I wasn't going to do it, but it really finishes them off. And I'm putting it behind the category, uh, category card for pattern. Be sure to share your tags and your experiences with the Facebook group, All Things Mixed Media, Creative Katie, or tag me, Creative Katie, or hashtag Mixed Media Technique Tags 2017 on Instagram. Thanks for watching, and I will see you with the Mixed Media Technique Tag number two.